Hey everybody, it's Ben here. I'm working on the Electrac Rat Rod. This is an old electric lawn tractor that was junk. It was used for parts, it's all rusted out. And I'm just trying to fix it up with whatever parts I have to run it in something called the Junk Parade. So I've already got my 10 inch Nissan forklift motor in here, at least temporarily. I'll have to uh, weld in some extra metal to make it sturdy enough for everything to stay together. But let's come in close. I'll show you what I've done so far and I'll show you what I got uh, plan on doing next. So I've got the motor in at least temporarily. Uh, the back of the tractor was so rusty, I simply cut that off, which made it easier to get the motor in. But the motor is so big, the drive shaft actually sticks right out through the side. So my plan here is, is I'm gonna run a chain on the outside of the tractor. I can spin the tires around backwards so they're further away from the body. And then back inside the box, what I'm planning on doing is having a, a jack shaft and this will be down inside the box a little bit. I'll put a sprocket on this side, which will be out under the fender. That'll transfer the power through down to here, where I'll have a sprocket to a chain going down through the box. So under the tractor, I already pulled the original V-belt pulley off of the driven shaft in the transmission. That's 3 quarters inch, so I should be able to slide a 3 quarter inch bore sprocket on there cut a hole going up and run a chain uh, from this sprocket up to that jack shaft. So the front of this lawn tractor would normally have two large six volt batteries in here, golf cart style. And if we look, it's about 11 inches across, almost 17 inches wide in the top part. And the full depth all the way up to the hood is about 18 inches. And what I'd like to do is I have a couple of Nissan Leaf cells, cell modules, and I think those would probably go in here pretty nice. Um, I like to use uh, any kind of mock-ups whenever I can. And it turns out that this IKEA cutting board makes a pretty good stand-in for this battery. So just for example, this can get all beat up. I don't care. I can lay that in there. And what's interesting is that I still have my original Open Revolt motor controller. And if I just stand this up as a mock-up, and set the motor controller in here, it looks like I still have enough room uh, to be able to close the hood. And then on top of that, if I wanted to show this off at a tractor show or something, I just pop the hood open, everybody would be able to see the motor controller mounted right there, which would be pretty cool. Now, I could also uh, lay the batteries down flat and have a, a pancake stack of them coming up. That would fit as well. Uh, so it's nice to know that I have the opportunity to go either horizontal or vertical with them. Um, I did also test the existing uh, control circuitry in this tractor and unfortunately none of it's working. So I'll probably just take these components out here, save them as, as parts for fixing up other tractors, but that'll give me some more room in the front so I can have my Nissan Leaf battery pack at about 48 volts along with a 500 amp 144 volt uh, open source motor controller. And what I'll have to do is design some sort of tabs or brackets or something to mount both the battery and the controller uh, to the frame of the tractor. So up here, these are resistors that normally control the speed by dropping the voltage to the motor. Except that the control for them does not work. I got out a couple of bolts that held this in and two cables over here I had to undo, but now I can get this thing out. Here's the main three parts I just pulled out of the front of the tractor. Uh, the transformer used as a charger, uh, the gears and mechanicals for the lift, and the resistors and the charging timer. The resistors are for speed control. All together, that was a little under 40 pounds. So here I've got the motor controller and the Nissan LEAF cell modules. I'm planning on putting all this in the front of the tractor, but that comes to about 70 pounds. So will I be able to do wheelies or not? Who knows? So this is what the front of the tractor looks like after getting the charger and everything else out from the front and then uh, uh, shop vacing it. Uh, a lot of rust, 
you can see a few spots where there's rust all the way through. The paint did a fair job of protecting it overall. Um, it's still a pretty good thick metal plate on the bottom of it. And maybe what I'll do for the battery and the controller is I'll actually like hang them from the frame up here, put a couple bolt holes through there, something like that. So from below I was able to mark from the driven shaft straight up here and drill four holes so I knew where to cut through the deck of the mower. So now if we look down in here, we can see those four holes that I drilled and I'm hoping I can take the angle grinder with a cutoff disc and cut a big slot and that's where the chain will go through to the driven shaft. But it also means that I have to get the, uh, get the motor back out of here. So I finished cutting that slot and I threw a sprocket on there. This is the wrong sprocket, uh, wrong, wrong diameter shaft, but I had it handy. It is correct for this number 40 chain. So that's kind of the idea. Put a sprocket on that driven shaft, run a chain up through that slot that I just cut with the angle grinder. And then the chain will come through the top and that will go up to a jack shaft, which will uh, essentially uh, span across here, go to the other side, have another sprocket, another chain that will come back to the electric motor. The view from the top as best I can do it while uh, holding the video camera and doing everything else here, but uh, straight up and down from inside the box to a sprocket on the driven shaft of the transmission. So that's it for now. I'll keep working on this project and I'll see you next time.